This is News 10 Mornings. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It's January 26th. I'm Kiba Arnold. I'm Dan Did you have a good weekend? I did. All right. Did you? I did. I did. Did you? Well, your wife's birthday. Celebrated weekend, right? that. Nice. Oh. We went to this Japanese karaoke place oh, Friday nice. night. Nice. Yeah, it, it was fun. <laughs> uh, good morning to Rob Cromart. <laughs> but what was, what <laughs> was this the funniest guy? thing hey, about it all? 10,000 different videos to choose from. Right. So if it was probably five years or, or newer, it was a good going. video. If it was another one, we're looking at Bon Jovi videos <laughs> of a bunch of Japanese people in a parade. Hmm. Oh, okay. I don't think that was the original no. Living on a Prayer video. <laughs> I just I don't quite like remember it. it like that. And the beep and the sound was just a little off. Okay. But, you know, I was the designated driver, so okay. I noticed these things. I don't think the other <laughs> people no. like, oh, Did you this video. Did I you would say probably just a tiny no. little bit because you need to be well lubricated there in order to There you go. To right. Exactly. And this time Liquor I wasn't. Up. There'll be a repeat visit. <laughs> Claudia, get up there. Yeah, get there. Uh, she had fun, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's talk weather, Rob. It's all good for us. I know our friends in the east, a little different story, but for here, more yeah. of the same. Yeah, you know, here's the thing that's nice. That we've seen more sunshine in the valley. We certainly saw that yesterday. Uh, we're still looking at this really weird setup for tomorrow. Maybe a few uh, scattered light showers or a sprinkle in the valley, maybe an inch of snow up high, but uh, it's such a weird way that it's coming together. I'll explain it. And also this east coast blizzard. Yes, blizzard. You know, it's not uncommon to get blizzards this time of year, but it's usually in the plains where you get a combination of snow and really strong winds. We're talking major big time historic blizzard for millions of people on the East Coast beginning later on tonight. Now for us, very, very spotty as far as the fog. You can see it in Santa Rosa setting up dense fog there, Stockton, Modesto and areas down to the south. We're fine in Sacramento at the moment, but conditions are ripe to see that change as long as the winds die down. The wind is really the secret ingredient here where it has died down. Uh, we're seeing the dense fog set up where it's still a little bit breezy. It hasn't yet. Now here's what I'm talking about. You could see this area of low pressure down to the south. So this is a monsoon type setup in the middle of winter. So rain for Southern California by the time it gets to us clouds and maybe a shower at best. And then there's the east coast. Nothing right now, uh, but later on tonight and certainly by tomorrow morning, they're looking at feet of snow with gusts up to 60 miles an hour. So lots of drifting. I think much of, of New York City, Boston, other areas on the east coast are going to be closed tomorrow. There's just going to be way too much snow. Patsy dense fog today and a high close to 60 degrees. Melissa? Yeah, they were saying, Rob, make plans for your afternoon commute. I was listening to it because they anticipate that mm -hmm. to be quite dicey. Let's talk about conditions right now. Something to be aware of starting today. Getting you ready. Parking fee changes at six park parking lots do increase, so be prepared for that. Six parking lots today, and then we have several more to follow, so heads up for that. Amtrak Ace on time right now. We're dealing with some patchy fog in areas. We're looking at Manteca near the Manteca Bypass. This camera's working. Just some fog there, and I checked on one in Stockton, a little bit of fog, so our road weather index showing us in the Stockton area in Antioch, some orange, indicating some fog for you. If you're headed towards Modesto, be prepared for some fog on 99, Turlock area as well. Now, 99 at Interstate 5, back into Sacramento, nice and clear. 99 Kenton, we're watching an accident. If you're traveling towards Chico, we had an early morning accident vehicle in the bridge there near Keaton. Looks like uh, that is no longer a traffic impact. We're going to take a closer look at the Bay Area coming up in just a second. Now back to you. All right, Melissa, thank you. New overnight. We are following the developing story out of Walnut Grove. Metro Fire tells us multiple houseboats are on fire there. This is at the Walnut Grove Marina. This is on Old Walnut Grove Thornton Road. No yet uh, word yet on the cause of this or if there are any injuries. We have a crew on the way to the scene. As soon as we get more information, as soon as we get live pictures for you, we'll bring it to you. Also new overnight. The Secret Service is investigating after a suspicious device was found on the grounds of the White House. According to a White House spokesperson, the electronic device could be a drone. Now, it doesn't pose any threat, and uh, fortunately, President Obama and his wife are in India. The daughters, uh, Sasha and Malia, they are uh, safe and with their grandmother. And as I mentioned, the President and the First Lady visiting in India, where the President is kicking off a three-day visit. Today, he was a chief guest at uh, India's annual Republican Day festivities. The President treated to a grand display of Indian military hardware, marching bands, and also some uh, some camels there. The crowd did erupt when the president emerged uh, from his armored limousine. A lot of cheers for him as he took his place on the parade route. 
Happening today, back here closer to home, a Roseville man accused of killing three teenagers while driving drunk last month is due in court today. 24 year old Aaron Jordan Caudio was driving the wrong way on I 80 when he hit that car head on. Three teenagers, all from Granite Bay, were killed. Caudio survived the crash but has been in the hospital recovering from his injuries. He was released last Thursday and then booked on felony DUI and gross vehicular manslaughter charges. His bail is now set at $820,000. Also today, a former Nevada County supervisor accused of possessing child pornography is due in court. 65-year-old Terry Lamphere faces three misdemeanor counts of knowingly possessing child porn. He's made headlines before when he was accused of searching for child porn on his work commute, uh, computer as he was serving as a Nevada County supervisor. Other top stories we're following for you this morning. Big concerns nationwide about measles and now it hits close to home, at least in Sacramento County. Testing is underway on a possible case. News 10 Suzanne Fawn has a more for us from Elk Grove. There's a possible case of the measles currently under investigation here in Sacramento County. The initial concern stems from a visit to a pediatric clinic here in Elk Grove. According to spokesman Gary Zavarel for the Sutter Medical Group, on January 14th, a child came into the Elk Grove Pediatrics Office on Laguna Boulevard with possible measles. According to a release statement, quote, although exposure was minimal, we notified patients who were in the lobby area during the child's visit that they may have been exposed. The statement goes on to say that the care team is working with Sac County Public Health. Further testing is needed to determine whether this is in fact a confirmed case of the measles. And if it's not measles, then we breathe a sigh of relief. If it is measles, this sets off a whole chain of reactions that we're go going to do, including a lot of investigation, contact investigation, um, who the patient was in contact with. Test results will be ready as soon as Monday afternoon. In Elk Grove, Suzanne Fawn, News 10. Now, getting a vaccine makes your chances of getting measles significantly lower, but still a lot of parents are choosing not to vaccinate their kids. A new law that went into effect last year does make it more difficult for parents to opt out of getting their child vaccinated. They, if they have a personal belief exception, must have a signed form from their doctor who will explain the risks. Yet health experts say the rate of parents choosing to opt out has been on the rise over the last 30 years. We took a look at some of the numbers in November and statewide, the number of kindergartners fully vaccinated dropped to 90% last year. In Placer County, the immunization rate was 86%, Sacramento County 85%, Nevada County only 72%. Health officials say the majority of people infected, including those cases in Disneyland, have not been vaccinated. And a highly contagious strain of bird flu has been detected in some turkeys in Stanislaus County. The USDA reports a strain is connected to an ongoing bird flu outbreak affecting the Pacific Flyway, which is a major path birds use to travel between Alaska and South America. The birds from the inflected flock will not get into our food system, and this strain is not likely to affect people. However, most of the infected birds will die. For bird owners, the USDA recommends keeping your pets inside. Across America now, some 1,800 flights have been canceled already for today ahead of a major snowstorm. It is expected to pound the Northeast. The Nor'easter is expected to bring heavy snow, powerful winds, even flooding, starting later today and through tomorrow. A blizzard warning has been issued for a 250-mile stretch of the Northeast, including New York and also Boston. And there were plenty of flight problems over the weekend. This was because of security concerns and even some bomb threats. Sunday, two planes were evacuated after arriving at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. A JetBlue flight from Long Beach and a regional SkyWest jet from Phoenix, the planes involved. The FBI says online threats prompted the evacuations. Nothing was found on those planes. Earlier Sunday, a Delta flight from Los Angeles to Orlando was diverted to Dallas. That was because of a security concern. And on Saturday, two jets bound for Atlanta were escorted to the ground by F-16 fighter jets after someone posted bomb threats on Twitter. That Southwest flight from Milwaukee and the Delta flight from Portland were the ones involved. Nothing was found on either plane. No word yet if any of those weekend threats were connected.
In your money, UC Davis is trying to develop a way to use robots to pull weeds. At 540 this morning, we're going to tell you what the school is using to help robots distinguish weeds from vegetables. And earnings season is in full swing. We've got the earnings from Microsoft coming out today. And at 630, our money man, Joe Eshelman, will break that down for us. That's coming up on News 10 Mornings. All right, Melissa Crowley, it's 440. We have your traffic outlook. We do. It's that time in the 430 hour. We put our traffic technology to work for you. Now, if you're making that super commute, you know, generally it's busy, busiest, I should say, all the way through lately about 844 on Monday. So if you're planning to come home for your afternoon, typically Mondays, we see a fairly standard commute starts to pick up right around uh, 3. It continues uh, the Bay Area commute on home back into Sacramento until about 630 if you can plan accordingly. If you have an event or a meeting you want to be prepared for, send me a tweet at Melissa Crowley. We'll customize your own traffic outlook. Maybe you're headed towards the airport in and around Sacramento. The outlook for today, of course, is just some fog, including in the Central Valley. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a bit. Now back to you. All right, Melissa, thank you. Coming up after the break, it's a chance for some of film's best to honor their own. We're going to break down the winners at the annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Also a sign that you moved on, or is it a chance to get even with an ex? What the San Francisco Zoo is offering this Valentine's Day. Turning now to the life section this morning, it's a chance for cast members to honor their own, the 21st Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards, and they usually offer some insight into what we might expect during the Oscars. ABC's George Pinocchio has the latest from Los Angeles. And the actor goes to the cast of... Wow, to the cast of Birdman. The cast of Birdman capped a golden weekend by winning the Screen Actors Guild Award Thank for you. Outstanding for Ensemble I'm Cast. Proud to be I think actors love this movie, you know, for showing the courage that actors have to kind of go out there and lay it all in line. And uh, uh, I think that's probably why they respectfully uh, thought as a group uh, we deserved a little uh, prize. Still Alice star Julianne Moore added to her recent Golden Globe win with a trophy for Best Actress in a Movie. She joked about being dubbed the front runner Thank for you Oscar so much, Gold. The actors. It's hard not to think about it when people keep bringing it up. <laughs> Honestly, this has been a wild and wonderful ride. We made this movie last March. It hasn't even been a year since we finished it. Um, so the fact that the, any of this has happened has truly been an anomaly and, and really has surprised me every single step of the way. Eddie Redmayne picked up the prize for lead actor in the film for the Stephen Hawking story, Redmayne, The Theory of Everything. For the past 10 years, the SAG winner in this category the has gone on to win the Oscar. I didn't know that factoid, but thank you for it. Uh, now I won't sleep for months, thank you. If people are saying I'm the frontrunner, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's more, uh, more attention for the movie, and then hopefully it gets uh, more, more people in the theaters to, to watch the movie. The supporting prizes went to two actors who've also had strong showings in this award season. J.K. Simmons for Whiplash I'm and Patricia Arquette for Boyhood. And I don't really feel like this is just an acknowledgement of me. I do feel like it's all my castmates. I do feel like it's our project. I feel like it's also single moms, moms out there. And I also feel like it's my whole family. Aside from movies, the SAG Awards also honor the best in television. Venice. The cast you from Downton Abbey Thank took Drama's so, Ensemble so Prize, Thank and it was the actors the from Orange there. is the New Black who won for comedy. Individual it. TV acting honors went to Kevin Spacey and Viola Davis for their dramatic work, and William H. Macy and Uzu Aduba for comedy. Okay, so the music world is up next in the awards season. The Grammys will be handed out on Sunday, February 8th. Then it's the Oscars two weeks later on the 22nd. Of course, you can watch the Oscars right here on News 10. Well, drought concerns may mean taking another look at your front yard. The December storms are long gone, and now we're on uh, target for the driest January on record. And over the weekend at the Home and Garden Expo, a lesson in landscaping when you don't don't have water. Roberta Walker has made grassless designs her staple. That was even before the drought. She doesn't believe that the lack of water should mean a lack of style. And a lot of the people who walked uh, around the uh, exposition grounds came away very impressed. Rob Carlmark, there are all kinds of alternatives out there. There are. Um, I, I went all the way to the extreme when I was in Arizona. My front yard was all rocks. 
That's all rocks. Way. So yeah. I used to get out there instead of mowing the lawn, I would go out there and rake my rocks <laughs> every weekend. <laughs> make sure they look nice. I hope we're not going there, uh, but there is a way to conserve water and also make your front yard look nice. Hey, take a look at this. We've got some motion here in the clouds south to north. I want to talk about the East Coast blizzard here just for a second. And yes, this is a bona fide blizzard that they're looking at over the next couple of days starting tonight. Already some snow moving in. Combination of one to two feet for the metro areas. I would say there's an outside chance some places could get two, two and a half feet of snow. And then on top of all of this, this is by the way where they have a blizzard warning in effect for later on today until about Wednesday morning. We're going to have really strong winds up to 65 miles an hour. So think about that. A couple feet of fresh snow, super strong winds. The drifting is going to be insane. A lot of roads will be impassable and it's not rural areas way out in the boonies where nobody is. This is where millions and millions of people live and work. It's going to be almost impossible for some of those areas uh, to see transportation really get back to normal probably until Wednesday evening, maybe even Thursday. Now we have our own sort of uh, weird system setting up. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. An area of low pressure down to the south is hooking up with all this subtropical moisture. This is not unusual in summer or fall. In the middle of winter, this is not an ideal setup and not in a, a very typical setup for us because there's a couple things that happen with this. Yes, we could get some rain, but the rain is going to be warm rain. It's going to be light rain and for higher elevations, we're only looking at a couple inches of snow max and it takes a little while for that snow level to drop. So we're looking at rain, then switching over to snow. At this time of the year, typically any moisture that comes in for higher elevations is all snow. So it's a mixed bag for the higher elevations over the next couple of days. It's not going to happen today. It starts to come in by tomorrow. Uh, fog is our other thing that we're looking at. Patchy, dense in some areas. Generally, the densest fog is in Santa Rosa, uh, Stockton, and Modesto. So what we're looking at here is high pressure still blocking uh, any major systems from getting in here. But this sneaky little low is certainly going to bring at least some rain chances uh, to the valley starting by uh, tomorrow morning in through the afternoon. Now they're not great, but we'll go ahead and show it to you. I just want to uh, point out one thing. This is why you just don't throw a computer model up without explaining things. Take a look at how this comes together. Clouds at first and then you look at this and you think, hey, we've got a big snowstorm on the way at best because of the limited moisture. Yes, it looks like we're looking at snow, certainly for the central Sierra, but if you max everything out, maybe only a couple inches of snowfall uh, max potential out of that one. There's just not enough moisture uh, in the system to really do that much for us. With that said, uh, we still could be looking at some snow. Again, just a couple inches of snow up above 6,000 feet. After that, we're warming up and drying out. This is really the only time frame where we could get either rain or snow or both over the next seven to 10 days. And that's the way that it looks at this point. So again, today's going to be quiet, patchy dense fog, clearing up to 60 degrees. Maybe we get a sprinkle up to a shower in the valley, then we dry out and warm up into the 60s for the next seven days, possibly after that. Melissa? Good morning, super commuters. As you rise and shine, let's take a look at the Bay Bridge. No big delays, visibility not a concern right now. So off to a good start, although there are plenty of people rising and shining. Coming up in the 6 a.m. hour on News 10 Mornings, we're going to talk about those steel rods. Did Caltrans know about it? It had been a problem on another bridge prior. We're going to take a closer look at that. But right now we're taking a closer look at the approach. So far so good. Uh, and that includes some pretty good speeds overall for your super commute over the Tracy Triangle. And the last 10 minutes or so, fender bender right here on the connector westbound 205 to 580. We are seeing some slowings. This is earlier than we usually uh, see that slowing. Road weather index, a lot of orange. What's going on? That indicates fog. Stockton, Crosstown Freeway. Also, if you're traveling 99 towards Modesto. So News Radio KF FBK will keep you posted in your car no matter where you're traveling. And look at this. This is uh, 205 at Mountain House. Tracy commuters heads up. We have a little fog to get you started this morning. In Stockton, same situation. Interstate 5 at March Lane. Fairfield, not too bad along Interstate 80. And if you're traveling towards Davis Dixon, no issues with visibility reported yet. Natomas looking pretty good at that junction 5 and 80. Uh, back to you. All right, Melissa, thank you. Looking ahead now, if you are job hunting, here's a reminder for you about a job fair happening in Stockton tomorrow. Both public and private sector employees are looking to fill positions and you can even get some one on one resume help from employment counselors. News 10 is teaming up with the job journal to sponsor this event. OK, here's the information for you. The fair will be from noon to 4 p.m. tomorrow at the University Plaza Waterfront Hotel. Again, that's in Stockton. The address for you 110 West Fremont Street. The full list of job titles and descriptions is available at hireevents.com.
jobjournal.com. You can also visit jobjournal.com for more details. It's 452 coming up on News 10 mornings at 430, a job that is not for the weary. Yeah, we're going to tell you who's hiring for this specialty position coming up after the break. It's 455. Welcome back to News 10 Mornings. We have more now, Dan, on the developing story out of Walnut Grove, where more than a dozen houseboats have been destroyed by a fire there. Let's get straight out there. News 10's Jeff Marr at the scene. Jeff, we know you're just getting there, but you do have some information for us. What can you tell us? Well, Kiba, it looks like we've got 14 houseboats that were destroyed in this fire. Just a huge mess. I was just talking to one of the boat owners who came out here once she heard of these fires that broke out just after midnight, and her boat was actually spared. But there's just a lot of debris to clean up. All the fires are out, but she said that when she came out here uh, just after midnight, she said the whole marina was ablaze. So again, 14 houseboats that caught fire. It looks like this was a chain reaction fire started with one boat. She described hearing propane tanks exploding. She said a lot of these boats have large diesel fuel tanks on them. So once it went from one boat to the next, she said all she could hear were tanks exploding and uh, lots of fire all around. The fire department actually had to cut some of these boats loose to prevent that chain reaction from continuing on. Her boat was the very last one of this chain reaction that was actually uh, spared. So her boat would have been the next one to catch on fire had they not cut it loose. So her boat is somewhere adrift uh, down on the water. So they're gonna wait for daylight to look for it. But as far as she knows, her boat is okay. Uh, the others do not look good. Uh, all of those boats are now at the, at the bottom of the water. So this is gonna be a huge cleanup process out here. It's gonna take a, a long time uh, from what we can tell. No injuries and uh, no fatalities with this fire. The fire department says it appears that everyone is accounted for. More information to come throughout News 10 morning for now we'll send it back to you yeah you can just imagine how it went down slip right. to slip all right thanks jeff okay let's talk jobs now and today's who's hiring quest diagnostics is hiring a phlebotomist at their woodland location high school diploma and state of california phlebotomy certificate are required to apply visit www.questdiagnostics.com and once you're there click on the careers tab miss crowley what do you got for it always makes a good impression to be on time no matter where you're working right so our drive times first look in the 430 a.m. hour, a special focus on the Bay Area and Super Commute. A few brake lights starting to build, and it's happening earlier and earlier. So even before 5 a.m., plenty of company over the Tracy Triangle. That accident westbound 205 at 580, probably not helping too much. But we're dodging a bit of a bullet. It's not nearly as foggy as what we encountered uh, last We've week on worse, Friday. Right? Yeah, no. I guess there's just some patches, but it's not as widespread as what we saw last week. No, Sacramento's okay right now. It's more stocked in Modesto area that's setting up for the dense fog. We will okay. keep you apprised what's going on. We've just got started 30 minutes down just started to go. <laughs> coming back right after this